Okay, so go ahead and set this up on your paper. You're going to measure a focal length of 4 centimeters. That's the distance from the mirror to F. We're going to measure 8 centimeters from here to here. That's the center of curvature. We're going to measure that where we're going to put the object is going to be 10 centimeters away. And you should be doing this to scale. And then 2 centimeters would be the height of our object. We're going to use an arrow. If you want, you could draw a little person, but we're just going to use an arrow. One other feature I want you to do is way back here on your mirror, can you draw a vertical line on the back of the mirror? So the purpose of the vertical line, when we make our drawings, in reality, light's going to reflect off the mirror. However, for accuracy purposes, we're going to reflect all these beams off of the back of the mirror, off of this vertical line. So just kind of know in the back of your mind, light obviously reflects off the mirror. But when we do our drawings, we're going to do it off the back of the mirror. OK, this is vertical. All right, so we're going to try to locate our image. We're trying to find out where our image is. And so there's three rules that we're going to follow when we try to find our image. So rule number one, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a parallel line from the object to the mirror. So by parallel, what I mean is parallel to the base here. Here's our base. So we're going to draw a line that's parallel to that. We're going to draw it from the tip of the arrow. You could do this for any parts of the arrow, but we're just going to do it once, and we're going to use the tip of the arrow. So that's beam number one. then that beam's going to reflect. And if you remember our previous visual, how do parallel beams reflect off of mirrors? Through the focal point. Through the focal point. So what you're going to do is take your ruler. So let's write that. The beam reflects through the focal point. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler, and again, we're going back to that vertical. I'm just going to go ahead and reflect it right through the focal point. So that's the first beam. Beam number two is essentially the opposite of this. So it's the opposite of rule number one. So imagine if you did this in reverse. So you're going to draw a beam through the focal point. tip of the arrow, yeah, all these are from the tip of the arrow. Now you could do this for any part of the arrow and it works. Now again we're going to go all the way back through through the mirror and at the vertical. That's where we're going to send it towards. Okay, so any guesses on what it's going to do? going to go parallel, right? It's the opposite of what we just did. OK, 
take your ruler and again by parallel I mean parallel to that base Okay, so that's beam two. Uh, the reason you can do this, by the way, is imagine if you watch this beam go backwards. If we went backwards, we'd go parallel, hit the mirror, and then it would go straight through the focal point. So that's why we're able to do that. Uh, that's why we're able to draw that beam in the first place. Okay, all right, there's a third beam we can do. Beam number three, we're going to draw a line through the center of curvature. We're going to draw this through the center of curvature like this. Now I'm going to have to extend my mirror here. Okay, now if that ever happens to you, you didn't draw the mirror big enough, then just extend a vertical, just extend the vertical like that. So here's the concept of this. When this hits the mirror, maybe you can see it visually, it's going to hit it right on the normal. It's going to hit right on the normal. So therefore, what should happen to that beam? It should go straight back because it's going to hit it right on the normal. So therefore, it's going to come straight on back. So you don't really, I mean, technically what happens is it hits the mirror and then it comes back the same this way, like that. Yep. Any line that goes through the center of the curvature reflects right back. Reflects right back. So yeah, let's finish that up. Draw a line through the center of curvature. It will reflect back along the same path. So in other words, it's hitting at zero degrees, so it's going to reflect back at zero degrees. Okay? All right, so here's the purpose why we did these three lines. You're looking for the point where all three lines intersect together, and that's going to be the location of your image. So you look at your picture here, and I can see they intersect for me right here. So if you draw it properly, you should have a perfect intersection of those three. Okay, mine was pretty good. If you end up with like a triangle looking thing like this, if it's a small enough triangle, just estimate the center of that triangle. If your triangle is too big, one of your lines is off somewhere. So you're going to want to check, find out which line is off. So remember, this is the tip of the arrow. What we just did was try to find the tip of the arrow. So this is also the tip of the arrow. So let's draw in the rest of the arrow. So this is going to look like this. And it's underneath the axis. So the arrow itself, what happens to the orientation of the arrow? Inverted. It's upside down or inverted. right? So my arrow looks like that. And that's what we call the image. So this would be our image here. So some characteristics of our image is, someone said it already, this is an inverted image. Uh, how does the size compare to the uh, object? Smaller, yeah. Uh, it's closer, yeah, it's closer to the mirror. 
or in front of the object. And this particular image is what we refer to as a real image. And a real image, well, it actually exists. And kind of the way that we can test that is if we were to put a screen here, if we put like a screen like you're looking at the overhead right here or the um, from the projector, light forms an image. All the light comes together, light is actually located right here. So um, we can say we'll show up on a screen So there's actually light there. So as opposed to the virtual image we just looked at, if you go behind the mirror of a flat mirror and put a screen there, nothing's going to show up on it, right? But here, if we put a screen here, the image is going to show up right here. You're going to do a lab in a few days where you're going to test this out. But actually, right now, what are you looking at? What kind of image is on this screen? screen right here. Real That's a real image. So I'm taking this right in front of you and projecting it onto a screen up here. And so this would be a real image that you're looking at right now. Okay? Um, all right, so let's do a couple of measurements here. Why don't you guys measure how far this image is from the mirror? So I'm getting about six and a half. So we call this DO, uh, sorry, DI. And what does DI stand for? Image distance. Image distance, right? So it's the distance of the image from the mirror. And I got, what did I say, 6.5? So hopefully you're in that ballpark, 6.4, 6.6, something close. Let's measure the height of that image. Take your ruler, measure how high it is. I'm getting like one point, is that three? 1.3, 1.4. I'm going to go with 1.3. This is called HI, which is my image height. Did I say 1.4? I'll just write 1.4. Um, I'm probably about 1.35 or so. So hopefully you're in that ballpark 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. Yeah? Is it wrong if we have everything right besides the, like, one of the measurements? These numbers? Yeah. Yeah, if you're close, that's good. Yeah, since we're all, I mean, there's error, right? There's human error right now. So we should be, cl you should be cl somewhat close to these numbers. And mine might not even be that good. If we use a different object type, like we took it from the middle of the arrow, because I didn't have enough room to draw the full two centimeter arrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you didn't draw, yeah, if you did a different one, it would be different. You're right. But your distance should be the same, though. Yeah. So the height, the image of the dis the distance image is not dependent on the height. Because if I drew the middle of this, right, I would just end up at the same place, but the middle over here. Okay. All right. Let's do the math on this. So there's something called a mirror equation. So let's find out how accurate we were. So we'll give you the math to figure out how accurate we were. So the mirror equation looks like this. Yeah, pull out your calculators if you don't have them out yet. One over F equals one over DI plus one over DO. That's the mirror equation. 
So let's see what we should have gotten if we drew it perfect. So our focal length was 4. Our DO was 10. So 1 fourth equals 1 over DI plus 1 over 10. Okay, so you can do the math on this. Don't forget to re-reciprocate or reciprocate this after you do these. Does this equation remind anyone of something from last year? Resistors, yeah, parallel resistors. It's in the same kind of form. Okay, solve for DI. Now, hopefully our DI is close to 6.5. What I got? 6.67. So I wasn't really that close. Anyone measure 6.7 in their drawings? A few people. So yeah, your drawings were more accurate. So this would be the true DI. Okay couple other equations we're going to look at is the magnification equation. Looks like this. M. What does M stand for? Magnification. Magnification, right. So M is equal to HI over HO. So the meaning of this, let's say my object was one centimeter and my image was two centimeters, then HI over HO would be two. M would be two. So what does that mean? What does M mean? It means that it's twice as big. So the magnification is telling you how much larger or smaller the image is going to be compared to the object. So where might it, when might it be useful to magnify things? Okay, so what what uh, optical device might we use to magnify things? Magnifying glass. Okay, a magnifying glass, or a microscope, or a telescope. So they all have magnification ratings. So if you remember from biology, it probably said 10 times, or 20 times, or something like that. They're telling you the magnification. Yeah? Is it necessarily like proportionate? Uh, yeah, the magnification is telling you the proportion, exactly, how many times larger or smaller the image is compared to the object. All right. Now, as it turns out, it's also related to the distance. Uh, negative, so HI over HO is also equal to negative DI over DO as well. So what I'd like to do is utilize this equation to, first of all, figure out what our HI should have been. If we drew it perfect, what should our HI have been? and then we'll calculate the magnification. So we're going to go HI over HO. Uh, what was our HO2? Yeah. Equals, so we're going to go negative. Our DI was 667. Let's use the theoretical DI, 6.67, divided by our DO. was 10. Alright, so I was getting HI of like 1.3 or 1.4. Negative 1.33. 1.33? Yeah. Okay, so my height was pretty much perfect, right? I was right between those two even though my distance was off. So there's a negative here. What do you think that negative means? Okay, the negative means that it's inverted. So a negative height, when something has a negative height, it means that it's going to be inverted here. Okay? And maybe you remember when you were looking at things under magnifying glasses or uh, microscopes, and you move the slide to the left, do you remember how it looked in the screen? Is that too long ago? All right, how about this? I'm going to move my pen to your right. 
Okay. How does it look when it, you look at it up on the real image on the screen? Goes to the left. So what's happening to that image? The camera's backwards. Okay. It's inverting the image. It's flipping the image, right? Um, okay, so anyway, that's our HI. And then the last thing we're going to do is calculate our magnification. HI over HO. You could use either of these at this point because we know everything. Conceptually, though, magnification is based on the image height proportion. So we have negative 133 over 2. And that's what? Negative 6, 7? What are the units for magnification? There are no units. So it's unit less, centimeters over centimeters, right? Unit less. What's the meaning of a negative magnification? It's smaller. Okay. No. I'm glad you guys all said that. Negative magnification does not mean smaller. Negative magnification means it's inverted. Okay. Now the image was smaller. What's telling us that it's smaller? Less than one. So this number here is 0 0.667. That number is telling us that it is smaller, less than 1. Because if it was 1, what would that tell you about HI and HO? They're equal, right? They're same height. So magnification of 1. And if HI is bigger than HO, then it would be 2, right? It would be doubled. 